In 11's activity one, we set up the card. The card had some uh, member variables uh, that are private. Uh, this is all encapsulation. We get them as parameters. We set them up. Then we built accessor methods and a utility method called uh, matches. We're just uh, we're given another card, and we see if that card's suit rank and point value is the same as our own uh, suit rank and point value. So you can check out 11. Uh, I have some other videos that explain this in more detail. We also built the two string method. And then we built some unit tests for that. So we made three different, we made several different cards and we tried testing them against each other um, to see if they were the same or different and to see if we could print them and you know we we're just kicking the tires on all the little units yeah, every little uh, function that we built so that's a unit test that was 11's activity one and then it gets a little more uh, complicated with 11's activity two we built a deck and the deck had this is an aggregate object meaning it has um, other instantiated objects nested inside of it um, we had to populate that when we built a deck. We had to build a card for all the rank suits and values that we were given. And then uh, some utilities I did not... Oh yeah, we haven't gotten to shuffle yet. That's going to be coming up soon. Um, what we had to do then was build a deck tester um, that, uh, that isn't demonstrated here, but um, creates a deck and then runs through all the functions of the deck. It tries dealing cards, checks to see if it's empty and out of cards to deal, that kind of thing. And then uh, what we'll have to do to add to that is shuffling. But we haven't gotten to shuffle yet um, because we, um, we changed what our run button did. And instead of running card tester or uh, deck tester, we're now um, doing a practice assignment in act activity three called shuffler and when in here in this replet when I press the run button it does run shuffler so if I run it now we can see what it does and you'll see that it does four perfect shuffles and a perfect shuffle is uh, doesn't live up to its name as we talked about in class that the perfect shuffle um, has a flaw in that in a perfect interlace pattern um, uh, with only four cards, every other shuffle is back to its original order. And that's a problem, zero, one, two, three. Whereas uh, the next algorithm we tried was a selection shuffle, and I have a different video that explains like the process of that, um, and that is um, much more random, as you can see. So for the first part, we did this perfect shuffle, which, which was following this uh, interlace pattern that, we've, uh, that we discuss in class. Let me show you what I mean. This is largely what I mean by interlace, that we like split the deck in half and then interlace them in between. But if you notice, the bottom card always stays on the bottom and the top always Carl, uh, stays on the top. That's called an... Uh, I think that's an out shuffle so the outside stay uh, there um, and so the the process of, of how this works is um, this is just how everything this works we split it um, the animations are on hold on do 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 so okay I put the current slide and so in order to do this we'll loop through halfway um, and as we do, uh, as we loop through from here to here, um, we have a counter going up by two each time. So that way it keeps a gap. Um, and this gap can then be filled in once this, excuse me, once the shuffle then go, starts from the second half, uh, the by two counter will start here and then go um, by two interlacing the second half of our array into the gaps created by the first part of the sorting algorithm. And so the mechanics of that are what we see here, that we make a temporary array that we're going to copy stuff down to, 
Um, we note the midpoint, though, you know, that's just for convenience. Then we create two counters, um, the by one or by and by two, uh, you can call them whatever you want. I call them by one, by two. And then I loop from zero to mid. Um, now, what I want to point out here, uh, let me grab this thing, is the, um, notice how this loop, I am skipping, because I have my by one here, uh, I'm skipping the initialization uh, of a counter um, right here. Instead, I'm just giving it the condition and the increment. Uh, it's kind of cool that I don't need to de uh, declare anything because I've done it up here. Um, and so that way, as I loop through, I'm copying the values um, to the next one and going and jumping by two. Um, and when I say to the next one, I, what I mean by that is I'm saying, hey, my temporary variable at the two position, I now set you equal to the values at the ones position. That's how I get the gap because the next time, then by two, will go up by two and leaving that gap as I just demonstrated. Now, the goal of this is not for you to memorize uh, this particular algorithm, um, though recreating it um, shouldn't be all too hard. Uh, the real point is that we get to look at a complex algorithm. We get to try it out. We get to see how it works. Well, this one is it. We get to see how it works. We get to, you know, kick the tires on this thing. That's cool. Um, and you, you should be asking questions and trying to make sure you get your head around this. Um, uh, but yeah, you, you won't need to recreate it as long as you understand what's happening here. But it's a different story for the selection shuffle. You'll, this one's much simpler. The algorithm is easier to program. It's, it's just a handful of lines of code, um, but it's much more effective and something that you should be able to use in other, all sorts of other programming. So we'll start by counting backwards and each time that we do that, um, each time that we count backwards, we will pick a random number um, and we'll use the random uh, math.random and to draw from uh, zero up until uh, and including k. Um, and let's say for example we got four, then we'll create a temporary um, placeholder. Uh, this, these are ints, so we'll use an int for now. Um, and we will set it equal to that. So essentially um, what we're doing is making a copy of this guy. And that means it's now safe for us to copy this value over here. So values at R is equal to values at K. We now have two of those. But that's fine because then we can copy this thing down over there. Now we've essentially made a three-part swap. Um, and so k is now free to go down, k minus minus, and we will repeat the process and do another swap. So you should be able to work that out. Um, it's, yeah, we'll repeat the process, do it all over again. And so uh, this is essentially the point um, that we start at the last uh, we start at the last uh, number um, we'll go as long as we're greater than zero and we'll count down by one and we'll draw a random position and then we'll do the three-part swap so you should be able to uh, recreate this um, in a pop quiz or in a different program um, yeah please let me know if you have any questions